Today, we're unboxing the Dell XPS 17 2020 edition. I've been waiting for this laptop for about a month now, and I was really worried that I wasn't gonna make it here in time for medical school. But now that it's here, let's dive right into it. Ooh, love that crisp sound, taking off the plastic. Lift up the box. Ooh, it's a heavy box. I like to think I work out a lot, but this box is still pretty heavy. It's nice and sleek, nice black finish, matte finish on the outside. Let's open it up, see what's on the inside. Nice XPS design on the inside. The laptop. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Look how big it is. Let's put it to the side and we'll look at that in a second. What do we got in the box? We have instruction book. We have a USB-A and HDMI converter because this laptop only has USB-C. We have a power brick to charge the laptop as well as a wall plug. So pretty standard stuff. It's nice that they threw in a converter so you don't have to go buy all the dongles and things to convert USB-A to USB-C. All of that just extra annoyance. Uh, but I think that's all that's in the box. Set that aside and let's take a look at the laptop, what everyone's really here for. Let's put this front and center. Let's get everything else out of the way. So we focus on the star of the show, the main attraction. Ooh, I'd love to hear that. Take this out of the plastic. There she is, the Dell XPS 17 in all of its glory. Something I never had with my old laptop is opening the screen with one finger. So let's see if we can do that. There we go. Just took a little bit of getting used to. Oh, and look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Let me show you what I'm looking at right now. Dell XPS 17 in all of its glory. Now I am insanely excited to go and try this out right now. So I'm gonna go test it out for a few days and I'll be back with my review. What's up guys? My name is Eric and I'm an incoming Canadian first year medical school student. I've been playing around with the Dell XPS 17 for about two weeks now and I'm really excited to share my thoughts with you. If you're not that big on tech or you don't know much about computers, I'm going to try to break down this Dell XPS 17 laptop for you in simple terms that students understand. First, I want to tell you about some general comments I have about the laptop. It is a heavier laptop, coming in at 5.5 pounds. But for that extra weight, you do get a lot of performance out of this laptop. In fact, I'm actually switching my current laptop as well as my desktop in exchange for the Dell XPS 17. Additionally, it's also very intuitive and straightforward to use whether you're an experienced Windows user or if you're coming newly from Apple. The Dell XPS 17 is named that way because of its 17-inch screen. There's also other models with 13 and 15-inch screens, but we'll cover those in other videos. The Dell XPS 17 also comes in a few different configurations based on what your needs are. Personally, I got a very high-end version of the Dell XPS 17 because I was interested in doing video editing as well as some gaming on the side on top of my usual web surfing and studying. Now, typing in university is very important. Whether that's taking notes for lecture or maybe messaging someone in a group chat, you're probably going to be typing a lot during your time in university. So it's very important to get a comfortable and nice feeling keyboard for your typing needs. The Dell XPS 17 has a very functional and sleek keyboard. It's very nice to look at, but it also performs very well. Just here are the button presses. It sounds very nice. Additionally, compared to what I previously had on my old laptop, it doesn't feel as mushy and it's a lot more satisfying to press each button. Usually I can type around 110 to 120 words per second, but on the Dell XPS 17, I find that I'm actually averaging about 113 words with only two weeks of using this laptop. The more I get used to it, I expect this laptop will be even better and I'll be able to type even faster. The key is the travel distance of each of the keys, which gives you that nice and satisfying click 
that just really makes your typing experience that much better. Of course, it's not as good as something like a mechanical keyboard or maybe other laptops like the Lenovo ThinkPads. However, this is a very solid keyboard that I'd recommend to anyone interested in typing a lot during university. Next, the trackpad. Now, Apple usually has a very good reputation of having the largest trackpads, especially on their MacBook Pro series. The Dell XPS 17 comes very close in size to the Apple trackpads. On my previous laptop, it was a lot of scrolling, scrolling, scrolling because the trackpad was so small. But this way, I can just swipe left to right and I can move basically anywhere on my screen. It also has a very satisfying click as well. Next, let's talk about the screen, which is arguably one of the most important things since you're going to be staring at it all day. The screen is 17 inches and is very bright and vibrant and gives you the full range of color. It's also amazing how big the screen is because of the thin bezels along the side. I opted for the FHD version, which is the non-touchscreen 1080p, but there is an option to get the 4K panel instead so you can have the touchscreen as well as better resolution on everything you're looking at. The one downside to the 4K option is that you don't get as much battery life and the laptop will be a bit heavier than if you got the 1080p option. Next, I'll talk about the battery, which is something, again, very important to students that are on campus all day studying at the library and might not necessarily have access to an outlet at all times. If I'm just doing some light work like surfing the web or reading a textbook, the battery lasts me all day and I have lots of charge at the end to spare. However, if I'm doing something more intensive during my day like video editing or maybe a little bit of gaming, then that battery life will obviously not be as good. However, when the battery does get very low, the charging on the laptop is very quick. I can charge my laptop from zero to 100 in about an hour and a half. Now, I wanna compare the Apple MacBook Pro 2020 to the Dell XPS 17, since I'm sure a lot of students considering laptops in this price range will be stuck between these two. Now, the Apple MacBook actually has a 100 watt hour battery, whereas the Dell XPS 17 has a 97 watt hour battery. This is simply how big the battery is and how much charge it holds. Now, the Apple battery is a bit larger, but that doesn't always translate to better battery life. The average battery life on the MacBook is 10 hours and 55 minutes, whereas on the Dell XPS 17, with the 1080 panel screen that I have, it averages about 14 hours. So that's a very big difference, especially if you're on campus and you're studying and you don't have any access to an outlet to charge your laptop. Next, let's talk about sound quality. I know a lot of students like to relax and listen to music, or maybe just even listen to music while they're studying. So sound quality is a very important factor to a lot of students. The laptop has two front-facing speakers that face right towards you and have a lot of deep bass and clarity, but I'll let you take a listen for yourselves. Next, I wanna talk about build and design. So like I mentioned previously, the Dell XPS 17 comes in at 5.5 pounds. It is a lot heavier than the MacBook Pro that we were talking about earlier, which comes in at 4.3 pounds. Now, although it is slightly heavier than the MacBook Pro, it does come with better performance. So again, you're sacrificing that portability for performance. But if you're setting your laptop down for long periods of time and you don't really move around too much, especially if you're carrying it around in your backpack, you won't really notice a huge change in how heavy your laptop is. Next, the bezels on this laptop are almost non-existent. The 17-inch screen fits nicely in a laptop that's the size of a 15-inch. Because the bezels are so small, you can get so much more real estate on your screen without sacrificing the size of your laptop as a compromise. When you're typing on the laptop, the keyboard always feels cool and comfortable. Unless you're doing something a little bit more intensive, like video editing, where the keyboard might get a little warm. It also has some features that you would expect in a premium laptop, including Windows Hello, a fingerprint scanner, as well as a Kensington lock slot. The one drawback I have about the build of this laptop is the webcam, which is not that great. So this is what the webcam looks like on the Dell XPS 17. It's not the greatest, but it's not too bad either. Next, I'll talk about some upgrades you can get for the laptop. More specifically, firstly, I would really recommend getting at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. 
And for those of you who don't know what RAM is, RAM is essentially your desktop workspace. The more space you have, the more opportunities you have to put stuff on it and be nice and comfortable without feeling too cramped. The smaller your RAM, the smaller your desk space, and the sooner you start to feel crammed and not that comfortable using your laptop because it'll start to slow down. Next, I would really recommend taking a look at how much of your hard drive space you're using. If you're filling those hard drives all the way to the brim, your laptop will start to slow down as well. So you wanna make sure that you're getting a hard drive that will satisfy your needs for the next three to four years without filling up all the way. Lastly, I wanna talk about the processor, which is like the brain of your laptop. The faster your processor, the better your laptop will run. If you're getting a laptop at this price point, I would really recommend getting a better one, especially if you wanna future-proof yourself and get ready for the next three or four years when better software becomes available or newer technology comes out. You don't wanna be left behind and then have to get a new laptop a year from now if you chose a cheaper option. Next, I wanna talk about price, which is something I know that's gonna be very important to all students. The highest end model of this laptop comes in at under $3,000, whereas the base model comes in at under $2,000. Now, don't get me wrong, these are very expensive laptops, but you're paying for that quality of a laptop that you're going to be using for hours a day for at least a few years. My friend recently told me about a saying which was, buy once, cry once. Essentially, spend a little bit more money to get a better screen, faster processor, and great sound quality and avoid all the headaches that a cheaper laptop might cause you. Of course, I know that's a little bit of a stretch when we're talking about the Dell XPS 17. Lastly is just a word of caution that a lot of medical schools are employing a lot of software that are incompatible with tablets like the Surface Book or iPads. A lot of the time you find reviewers giving recommendations on how they're great for students, but oftentimes they will have secondary laptops which they're using as well. And I find that a lot of my classmates do have that. If they have a tablet, they're using it in tandem with the laptop that they have as well. So just a word of caution that if you're getting a tablet, be careful and check what your medical school is using before you go and spend $1,000 on something that won't be compatible with your school's software. So that's it for my review on the Dell XPS series. Let me know what you think and how it stacks up to other computers that you might be using. Like usual, I'm Eric, and that's been your daily dose of Medi Sun, and I'll see you in the next video.